Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Life Science course, and today's lesson will be on worms. The three objectives for today will be, number one, identify the characteristics of the three types of worms. Number two, describe the structures that allow worms to digest their food. And number three, distinguish between free living and parasitic worms. Let's start by asking the question, what are worms? They're, that, they're those icky, creepy, crawly, slimy things that we put on the ends of our fishing hooks. Um, but in science, we are able to classify them um, in more detail. What uh, most scientists would say is that they're very soft-bodied animals, and they are invertebrates. Invertebrates, again, have no backbone. So they're pretty flexible, and they're able to move in and out of the soil pretty easily because of the fact that they don't have a backbone. They also have bilateral symmetry and what that means again is that both sides, if you were to split a worm, this would be my worm, if you were to split it down the middle, both sides, the left and the right, would look exactly the same. There would be mirror images of each other. Also, worms have three tissue layers. And all worms have these three tissue layers, and they're organized into tissues or organs that the worm needs in order to survive. There's three types of worms. We have round worms, flat worms, and segmented worms. An example of a round worm would be the heartworm, or the worms that you might see here um, in this picture. Uh, that are actually laying inside of a heart and can cause heart failure. And a lot of times you may hear about pets like dogs that need to get heartworm treatment, which just means that they have to take some medication in order to kill those worms because the, that could be fatal for the dog. And then we also have flatworms, and an example of that would be tapeworms, and we'll talk about those later. And then we also have the very common earthworm, that you may have seen. Uh, after it rains, they come out. Um, and you may also use them to fish. Uh, and so we'll talk about those too. So where are the worms? Where are worms located? Well, they're located everywhere. They're all over land and water. They are parasites or animals that depend on other animals or other organisms for food and a place to live. Or they can be free living, which means that they don't necessarily depend on another organism in order to live. So let's first talk about the characteristics of flatworms. Flatworms are flat, and they belong to the phylum platyhelminthes. That's my, one of my favorite science words to say. And um, obviously, they get their, their flat. They get their name from the fact that they have flat bodies. The word platyhelminthes actually just means flat body. And so uh, what this does is that it helps the animal or the worm to exchange gases, meaning the oxygen that they need in order to live, and the carbon dioxide that they release as waste material. It helps them to do that a lot easier because their body structure is so simple. And they exchange gases by the process of diffusion, which just means that it passively goes in and out of their bodies. So flatworms are both parasitic and free living organisms. That means some flatworms can live off of other organisms and some flatworms don't need to live off of other organisms. Now flatworms are worms that can cause disease in uh, other plants and animals. Um, and um, not all flatworms cause disease, but they are able to do that. There's three types of flatworms that are um, used to classify flatworms, and we'll talk about each of these. The first is called planarians. The second one is called a fluke. And then the last one is the tapeworm. And here's a picture of the tapeworm right here. And we'll talk about the planarians first. The planarians are microscopic. They can grow to be macroscopic, but they start out very, very small, and they're, very, and they're free living worms. Um, they're very distinctive in that if you were to see a flatworm, you would know that it was because it's got this distinct head. It's like a triangle shape, and it's got these little, two little eye spots at the top, and then it's kind of got this 
kind of flat body in the back. Um, and so that's how you can distinguish it from other flatworms because of that triangle shaped head. Now planarians live under rocks and plants and they also can live in fresh water. Uh, their bodies are covered in this small hair like fuzz uh, called cilia. And also the flatworms produce a mucus like a slime to help them to move around in their environment. So with the cilia and the mucus, they're able to go uh, and move around wherever they need to in order to find food. Now they reproduce asexually, which means that they don't, um, they don't have to produce sex cells. And the way that they re reproduce asexually is that you would take a flatworm and if it wants to reproduce asexually, then it's able to actually divide up its own body so that after asexual reproduction, you end up with two flatworms from one. This would be considered splitting and regeneration. We call that regeneration because it's able to produce other body parts from one body part. Now, flat planarians, excuse me, can also reproduce sexually. They can make sex cells. Um, and so they're also classified as what we call as hermaphrodites because each of the planarians can uh, make both the female and male sex cells, which of course are the egg and sperm. And so what would happen is, um, one planarian would exchange its sperm or male sex cell with another planarian and that sperm would go, would, would fertilize the female eggs in another planarian. Another distinguishing feature for planarians are that they have one body opening. They just have a mouth only. Uh, they do not have another body opening, which we'll talk about later, other worms do, and that would be the anus. But the planarian only has the mouth. Uh, the planarian lives primarily off of very small microscopic organisms and dead organisms. So it, because it's able to eat de dead organisms, it helps us to recycle nutrients back into the soil and the earth. So they can be helpful worms. 